Kowski got his PhD in 1983 at the University of Gdańsk, Poland, and his habilitation in 1995 at the Institute of Physics, Nikolaus Copernicus University, Torun, Poland. In 2003, he got uh, the title of professor awarded by President of Poland, and since 2019, Professor Zhukowski has been a corresponding member of Polish Academy of Sciences. Currently, he is a professor at the University of Gdańsk and the director of International Center of uh, Theory of Quantum Technologies at the University of Gdańsk. Professor Zhukowski has been collaborating with uh, Professor Zellinger uh, at the University of Innsbruck visiting uh, Professor Zellinger uh, as visiting professor almost every year in the 90s uh, of the previous century, among others spending the full academic year 1991-1992 and at least uh, a month or more uh, uh, up uh, every year up to the end of uh, 90s. Then within this century uh, Professor Zhukowski worked uh, as a visiting professor uh, at the University of Vienna in uh, 2001, 2002, 2004, uh, 5, 6, uh, 10, 11, uh, 17, 18. And some of these appointments uh, were teaching appointments uh, and as a chair at the uh, Chinese University Tianhua, uh, Beijing, and also as a visiting distinguished professor at the University of Science and Technology of China and uh, for four months at the University of Singapore. He also paid some short-term visits uh, at the University of Munich and uh, Stockholm. Uh, in 2013, Professor Marek Żukowski got the most prestigious Polish Scientific Award, which is the prize of uh, Foundation for Polish Science. Uh, which we call Polish Nobel, Nobel mm -hmm. and also the uh, Marie Curie uh, Prize of the Polish Academy of Sciences. Uh, he got also in 2014 Polish German Copernicus Prize, currently with Howard uh, Weinfurter, 2016 Havelius Prize uh, of the city of Gdańsk. Uh, he also got plenty of prizes the Minister of Science of the uh, Republic of Poland and uh, prizes awarded by the Rector of the uh, University of Gdańsk. Uh, in 2006, Professor Zhukowski got the Werner Green stipend Stockholm and just the last year uh, he became uh, the Institute for Quantum Optics and Quantum Information Vienna Fellow. Professor Zhukowski has published uh, uh, over 160 papers uh, related to quantum physics, quantum information, quantum optics uh, in the best scientific journals, including Nature. His papers got almost 15,000 of citations on Google Scholar. Uh, uh, Professor Zhukowski, the screen is yours. Um, thank you very much and hello to everybody. So I, 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 I believe that, let's say, the subject that uh, I will be talking about will, will be a kind of entertainment subject for you because it's not uh, directly related with the topic of your seminars. But uh, I hope that you will kind of see the reasons why I was interested in the subject. So, uh, and I very much thanks for, uh, thank for the invitation. And so I move into the presentation. Uh, uh, so this, this is the, I hope that you see this, this is a little bit crowded transparency. I don't know why I wrote it like that. So, so you, you've heard the title. So I, I will be talking about basically the Nobel Prize and starting from Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen, Paradox, and Bell's theorem, some ideas about entanglement, something that was crucial in my life, a scientific life, that JZ paradox. Then something that might interest you as a, a different look at crystals. We are using crystals uh, for uh, creating pairs of uh, entangled uh, photons and using such a crystal and a lot of uh, other interferometric devices 
Anton based, based on our earlier joint uh, works he performed with his group quantum teleportation which was a kind of let's say flagship experiment that opened uh, experimental phase of, of quantum information science which is now uh, an important branch of physics and this uh, that that it is the an important branch of physics this was uh, mm, let's say kind kind of recognized by the uh, Nobel Foundation committee and uh, which gave to uh, John Clauser, uh, Alain Aspe and Anton Seilinger in uh, 2022 Nobel Prize for experiments with entangled photons establishing the violation of Bell inequalities and pioneering, pioneering, pioneering quantum information science. Uh, and so that so this is more the essence and now let's say uh, let me go through the abstract so i will give a kind of overview of very brief overview of 60 years of effort that led to this prize and so i will say some few sentences about einstein podolsky rosen paradox and uh, in, um, bell's 29 years later comment on that paper and then the developments with, which were linked with the first laureate of the of the Nobel Prize that is uh, that means John Clauser uh, 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 and uh, and then we shall move to the role of Alain Aspe and his famous 1982 experiments then I will tell you something about, about the mood of the times in this quite a longish period and the change of mood around 1990 then about the loopholes in the experiments of both Clauser and Aspe they were very famous but non-conclusive then we shall go a little bit to, to a crystal or crystals uh, which we call in quantum optics non-near crystal but crystals in which uh, the phenomenon of spontaneous parametric down conversion uh, takes place and uh, and i will say something about uh, greenberger horn seilinger correlations which were for me an absolute breakthrough in this kind of research because it showed that there are much 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 more interesting phenomena than just those which were considered by Einstein, Podolsky, Rosenbell, Clauser, and Aspe earlier. Uh, uh, and then, then just a slide on the birth of quantum information science principal points. Of course, I invite questions. So if you are interested in, in Potter, I will be covering everything by a few sentences. So basically, of course, I will try to convey the very essence. Then we shall move into teleportation experiments and the postscript on the final experiments, which were really the, the final Bell experiments made so late, just, just look, just look. Uh, so basically, let's say the, the whole idea was started in, in by Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen. Do you see my, my pointer, by the way? Ah. Uh, okay, you have yes, yes, we, yeah, we, yes, we see it. Yeah, I, I was afraid of it. Okay, so just look, uh, 1935 and the final really um, experiments that proved who was right, whether Bohr, Bohr or, 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 or Einstein, were in 2015. Okay, uh, okay. So now, let, so let me go to another introduction. So let's say a kind of say uh, I want to stress the, the following just look that I I also your field will be uh, have, will have a, a fantastic year uh, in uh, 2025 because that's that's that will be 100 years of, 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 of quantum mechanics so you know very well that it was formed in uh, 1925 but uh, uh, 
as we know, quantum mechanics gives probabilistic predictions. Okay, as far as individual events, it gives probabilistic predictions. Sometimes prediction it means that the probability is one, but it's still only a probability. And also, it has some paradoxical features. And uh, let's say one of the most beautiful paradoxical feature was that it was discovered twice in 1925, because first in spring Heisenberg at the Helgoland Island discovered it, and then Schrodinger independently in Alps half a year later. And it all immediately met uh, an opposition, and especially of this gentleman, uh, who recognized the power of quantum mechanics as a practical uh, tool, but he was grumbling about its non-deterministic nature, which means that uh, it gives only, only probabilistic description. He, he thought that the final theory must give a deterministic predictions. And that started the einstein bohr debate. And so, I, as I said in my title, the, the, this will be partially about the Nobel Prize. So the Nobel Prize was in 2022. And uh, so, so just to recall that uh, both Einstein received, I stress the word received, their Nobel Prizes in 1922. Okay, and and there is a very strong link between those two dates. I do believe that Foundation chose the year 2022 on, to give the prize to uh, to Clauser, Aspe, and Seidinger because they basically closed, contributed to the closing of the um, definite closing of Einstein Bohr uh, debate. Uh, so this is the lovely event a year ago. Here is Anton Seidinger receiving his diploma from uh, from the King of Sweden. And far away, you can see uh, John Clauser and Alain Spe. That's my birthday on the next day, but still in 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 in, in Stockholm in during the banquet. And that's me, by the way. That's Anton Seidinger, um, Claudia Keller, who did not work in, in the entanglement experiment, but she was uh, a very important member of the team, uh, uh, which observed for the first time of interference of large mo molecules. And that's Harald Weinfurter, uh, a person who started just like me. Uh, collaboration uh, with Anton on the day first of, of forming of the group of Anton Seidinger. And finally, I will show you the, the fourth delegate from the scientists to the to the ceremony. That's Danny Greenberger, Greenberger uh, who uh, worked with Anton before us, and he was he's the first name in this uh, in those. Uh, Greenberger Hornsinger correlations, which are which are mentioned. This is this is the Royal Library in the Royal Palace. Okay, so the, let's say the, 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 let's say if you are more interested in the developments, I have a good news uh, for you that American Physical Society made this set of of papers, which I show now. Uh, uh, they, put them on the open access. And these are all the most important papers that were published uh, within the physical review journals, uh, which, uh, which uh, were important uh, let's say, causes of, of the Nobel Prize in uh, 2022. So as you see, the first the, uh, chronological um, um, sequence is such that first are the uh, Clauser experiments, then we have a, we have uh, Aspe experiments, then Anton's experiments. This was the uh, theoretical, and then except this one, 
that one and that one are based on, on this one. Um, the, the theory of the experiments was, was already um, uh, derived there. And what is missing in case of, atom, uh, of, of Anton is a very important uh, paper on teleportation, but it was published in, in Nature. Okay, so now let us, after this brief introduction of the fantastic events 15 months ago, uh, so I, I want to tell you about the story of this discipline, because this, this, this discipline has a very long story. Of course, it started with quantum mechanics, as a, a, and as we know, it's a very strange theory, and additionally, gives probabilistic uh, prediction. And so Einstein challenged this. He was, was disgusted by the fact. And uh, at a certain moment with, I, with Podolsky and Rosen in 1935, they published a paper which, which is uh, extremely famous. And uh, just to uh, tell you something that to To make you make you more interested in what will follow, I can and I, I can tell you that this paper was wrong. High, extremely highly influential. That was the, basically the birth of this discipline, but it was wrong. There were logical flaws in, in, in it, and if you are interested, I I, I may say what what were the flaws. And so they, they ob observed that if you have a, something that, which is called entangled state, I will perhaps pass to that a little bit later, then you can have two particles, okay, let's say very far away, one, one at, at moon, the other at earth. And if they are, they share a, a, a specific uh, entangled state, so they are des described as a single quantum um, system, which is which is described by an entangled state, then you can have a, such an entangled state that uh, whenever uh, you get a specific e event on both sides, then uh, if uh, if Alice, who is on the moon, uh, measures the, the, the same variable of her particle, then there is a perfect correlation. That means in that case, anti-correlation. Okay, the result minus one doesn't matter what it is, what it is will imply imply that Alice gets in her measurement plus one. And those events are spatially separated, and this is double meaning of this word. It does not mean only space, but also spatial separation in terms of 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 uh, special relativity. Okay, so the events have, if they have a causal connection, then, then there must be a common cause, but they do not have, a, cannot have a direct uh, causal, uh, one uh, event cannot have a direct causal influence on the other. And therefore, Einstein was claiming that, wow, therefore, the fact of obtaining by Bob this result causes no disturbance at Alice's side, and so this must, the probability that she will get this result for sure, must uh, imply that the result was, the, the value of the result was somehow carried by the, by the particle. It was already predefined before, before observation, and they called uh, uh, such a value element of reality. And uh, why this is, uh, I have to add additional thing that if you look in this experiment, if you look only at the events of, of the both side, they are totally random. So there's no prediction. Okay? The quantum prediction for the events in the case of, of that state con considered by Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen was giving to Bob absolutely random results. Okay, so a random result hap happens at both sides, and then there is a deterministic prediction, probability equal to one, of, 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 of a result, provided Alice measures the same 
variable as both measured on the high particle. Okay, so that really was kind of implying that there is some information in, on, on which is carried by particle A, which um, which uh, is simply a property that existed before uh, Bob's uh, measurement okay. and before Alice's measurement. And then there was a famous, almost immediately, Bohr's reply. Bohr, Bohr was, was in a shock, but after, I believe, two months or something like that, he published in Physical Review his response, and he said that Einstein for those he wasn't forgot uh, about complementarity. And the thing is uh, that, uh, let's say, um, that let me perhaps move into spin language. Okay, so if you have a device that measures um, a, a spin of, of an electron, let us say, then you can set it only to measure one of the components of spin. Okay, it cannot be set to another component. component. So mm, this complementarity uh, means that if you measure one of the components, you cannot say anything about the other component, especially if the state had, has had undefined, no, no, it was not giving uh, 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 deterministic predictions. Simply the Stern Gerlach, the magnetic field in the Stern Gerlach uh, device has one fixed direct direction, and you measure the, the spin along this direction of spin of a particle. So, so you just measure that in a single round of the experiment, and you don't measure the other thing. Okay, so and it remains absolutely undefined. And uh, and, and 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 then the debate died out, and uh, only some philosophically minded uh, physicists were moving into that. And then, uh, surprisingly, in 1964, a certain um, accelerator physicist, John Bell, uh, formulated his famous theorem, which which. Uh, was a direct, what it's often forgot, direct comment on the Einstein Podolsky Rosen paper published 29 years later. That shows you to what extent people forgot, uh, let's say, about, about, about this uh, problem. And as a matter of fact, of fact um, um, very many people kind of ac accepted Bohr's board's uh, answer, but they were not uh, studying uh, subtle, subtle things re related to that. What, but what is also I have to stress that Bohr did not show, he just argued that Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen must have been wrong, but he never showed it, uh, uh, let's say, uh, by, by by um, let's say deriving some kind of equality or inequality, whatever, which would which would uh, show that they, they were indeed wrong on the, on, on the argumentation. And so th that was let's say, a paper, and nobody cared about it. The the uh, bell. Instead of the original Einstein Podolsky Rosen uh, in paper, he uh, considered the state of two spins one half. We already were talking about it. And uh, the, the most beautiful state of spin, two spins one half is, is this one, which is usually called a uh, singlet. And this is a superposition of okay, the, the value plus one half for Alice. This, the, the, the quantum state, which uh, is related with the value plus one half in the z component, then it's correlated with the with the, uh, uh, the same but negative value for Bob, 
and uh, and and there is another super, 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 superposition of, uh, in which uh, the, the Alice has a minus value and Bob plus value. Then this minus sign is very essential because this only with this minus value singlet is what is what should be a singlet. That means it's absol absolutely rotationally invariant. So I chose here Z component, but it could have been just a, any other y or x or or whatever you like okay provided it's the same singlet is invariant uh, with respect to the to the choice of of the component and the, a trivial reason is that uh, as you know the, sing, the total uh, spin of, of singlet is zero and th therefore singlet is invariant upon uh, uh, rota uh, spatial rotations Okay, so this axis, um, uh, let's say, has to be has to be uh, uh, the same to 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 to, to uh, but it's ab arbitrary. And what is very important, there must be a minus. There is also a state where there is a plus, but it's not a single. It's uh, uh, the, 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 then. Uh, uh, and uh, so I will not be, be. I will not tell you anything about Bell's inequality because there is a funny thing that Bell's inequality was purely theoretical. You couldn't apply it to an experiment at all. It it only showed that the ideas of Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen are incompatible with quantum predictions. Okay, but you, you, the quantum predictions, uh, let's say, um, mathematical quantum predictions. If, if, if you want to know what, what, what uh, let's say, what was provided this non-experimental thing, then I can tell you during the discussion. Okay, and so the first real Bell inequality, so it's a kind of paradox, uh, was, was formulated by CHSH. The, the, the uh, quartet of authors and C stands for Clauser Nobel Prize 2022. The, the, the second is Mike Horn, uh, Shimoni, and Holt. Uh, and uh, they wrote down better Bell inequalities, and additionally, they gave a proposal of an experiment. And, and what is very important, Clauser performed this experiment. So it was not only a proposal. That, let's say that seems to be feasible, but uh, simply Clauser did it a few years, few years uh, later. And and perhaps I will bef before I move to the next slide, I will tell you some other things about Bell's theorem, and that certainly certainly linked with the CHSH inequality, which will go in the next slide. Is uh, is the following? Okay, so the, so Bell showed, and everybody agrees with this, that basically the ideas of Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen are uh, such that there is a, some kind of variable which is hidden in quantum formalism. Uh, what does mean? Uh, sorry, perhaps I, I, I should put it uh, differently. That there, that there are so-called hidden variables. So beyond quantum mechanics, there are hidden variables which are determining of the results of individual experiments. That was basically the idea of Einstein. Of course, he never said it like that, but thanks to Bell, we kind of know that um, this is a cool equivalent to that. So he associated with every state. So here you have a psi, which is the state, quantum state, a certain distribution of hidden variable. And he claimed that the, if we measure some event A, which is, uh, let's say, a setting of a device and a specific result, then it depends on, on this, this variable, the probabilities. And that's the reason why there are quantum probabilities. Okay. Quantum formula for such a probability is completely different, as you know. But, but the claim was that there is a distribution of unknown parameters 
which do not exist, which are missing from quantum mechanics. And those missing quant uh, parameters cause this uh, probability behavior. As a matter of fact, when I talked uh, to, to my late uncle, who was an engineer, and I tried to con convey to him Bell's theorem, and I said that in quantum mechanics we have only probabilities, then his immediate gut reaction is, ah, so you don't control at all parameters. Okay, so that was kind of engineer view. Okay, if you have a probability, then it means that you don't control uh, um, the parameters. I stress lambdas are non-existent in quantum mechanics, those lambdas. And there is nothing like this in quantum mechanics. Neither this uh, is, is a properly, uh, proper quantum mechanical, mechanical uh, object. And, and, and the, the funny thing is, uh, is that on the level of single particles, Basically, you, 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 let's say you, you, can, you can fool yourself that such a, a description exists. And, uh, but it turns out that when you have pairs of particles and then you can consider entangled states, perhaps I will come back uh, to this, this, let's say, basic emblematic example of an entangled state, as you see, it's a, it's a state which is correlated and you cannot ascribe a specific state uh, to particle A, neither to particle B. There's only one joint pure state of, of th those two. If, if, if we consider state of A, then it's always a mixed state. That it, it's a random uh, mixture of this state with probability one half and this state. Okay, so there is no pure state that you can associate with, with, with uh, uh, each of the particles uh, in an entangled state. There's only pure state, that means maximal information state, uh, uh, linked to both particles. Okay, and so that, that the good input of Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen, and Einstein was to show that perhaps there is the answer, but they were wrong in, 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 in the answer because they made logical mistakes. Okay, and so let me now move into clauser Holt Schumann Holt inequality. So if you use that type of uh, presentation of probabilities, that kind of structure with the hidden variables. Aha, I forgot about one more thing, sorry. The very, a very important word here is local. Okay, why? Wh what is locality? So here, in in the second formula, you see that the joint probability of event A and B to happen under the condition that the whole system were in the in state C is, uh, let's say, it's it's again a kind of random process governed by the distribution of those hidden variables. But then, locally, only the hidden variable decides what is the, and the, the result. It may seem to you awkward, but it's very important. What is very important? Alice may choose what she wants to observe. For example, one of the spin components at her own will. Okay, and so this A may is a choice of the observation of, of a certain component and there is and a specific result. And what is very important, it is depending only on her orientation of, for example, her Stern-Gerlach device, but not on Bob's and other way around, and that's locality. Okay, so in the Bell experiment, we assume that that uh, uh, whatever Alice does right before catching and measuring her particle and, and the result she gets cannot influence what is happening at the same time far away as the uh, observation st station of Bob and uh, other way around. And, and this is locality. And, and if, if, you, if you use this formalism and then 
you assume that you 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 define some some observables like spins but let we usually in the bell theorem we like very much the numbers plus minus one not plus minus one half so we translate of the observables to to we renormalize re them to just plus minus one eigenvalues now then if we want to have a correlation of certain observable of alice depending on her for example orientation of her uh, Sternger-like device and uh, another observable observable by bob which is, uh, depends on, on his orientation of, 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 of his Sternger-like uh, device and the eigenvalues are rescaled to plus minus one then in case of spins the local realism that's another word for uh, local hidden variable theories predicts that that such a algebraic structure of correlation functions will always add up to ma maximally uh, two access correlation function function in that case it's as you know the average of the product of the of, of, of the regions okay the standard statistical uh, definition so if they are plus minus one then it turns out that this value cannot bridge two um, but in the quantum mechanical prediction is two square roots of two and that's not epsilon okay that's 40 percent 41 percent more and this is a drama okay so this means that this everything here is from the point of view on, of nature wrong and that was shown by Bell, but plus additional conditions would made, which made his uh, in, original inequalities uh, experimentally useless. Yes. Uh, uh, and and what is very important, Clauser and Horn in 1974 they derived even better Bell inequality, which was uh, which is uh, which, which looks like that, and. Uh, do believe me, you, you can try this exercise. Just take all the axioms of classical prob probability theory, okay? And then you will, sooner or later, you will, you will be able to show that this must hold in any uh, classical probability theory, okay? Where this is, uh, sorry. Sorry, 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 back, where is back? Okay, this is probably a certain event, and this is alternative event. It means di not not different result, but a different setting and a, a specific event, and same on that side. Uh, and the, so, in classical prob probability, this cannot be above zero. In quantum mechanics, it, it can. And uh, let's say uh, the number is well above zero. Uh, okay. And and uh, the experiment that they proposed, uh, Clauser, Horn, Shimon, and Holt was using calcium atoms, which which have a very nice structure, which allows the following process. So here is uh, some kind of pumping. Now it is done with layers, but uh, in his experiment, Clauser was doing it by some electric uh, discharges, and you excite from let's say this ground state to this state your your system then it decays to this state and when it is in this state it it has a decay root to the ground state by a cascade that means it decays to to this state and then to this state and this is extremely short-lived and what is very important, the uh, the spin momentum is conserved in this uh, in this tra transition. So so this is the same spin and this is the same spin. Okay, and so it means that uh, the photons have to have uh, opposite spins. And spin, as you know, is uh, of a photon is it's really its polarization. And therefore, the photons have to be of opposite polarizations. And as a matter of fact, this tra transition gives us uh, photons in polarization 
uh, singlet. And that was the ex experiment of, of, of Clauser. And he was passing a beam of atoms which were excited and, and he was observing uh, emissions by to, in this observation zone and um, uh, looking for coincidences. And, and he showed that quantum prediction for the uh, correlated observations of, of polarization uh, follows the, the up to, of course, experimental noise um, follows quantum predictions. And quantum predictions immediately kill this local realistic description of Einstein's IPI, if you like. Uh, but what was wrong about his experiment, you know, if you have an, if you have an atom, then you know that uh, spontaneous a mission can happen at in, in any direction, okay? And and if it's even worse here because if this happens in a specific direction, then the other photon may go, let's say, 380, uh, 360 de degrees, uh, let's say, of the previous direction. Okay, so there was no mm, directional uh, correlation, so most of the emissions were lost. And from the point of view of Bell's inequality, if I come back here, it, this one holds only if the values are plus minus one. Okay? And, uh, and, and of course, the natural thing would be that if one of the photons is missing, it is not, not, not uh, detected, then the value is zero, for example. And then you will see that, uh, let's say, the quantum mechanical value will go down. Of course, you, there are some tricks and things like that, but it's uh, quite easy looking at this inequality to show that you will lose this quantum violation because that's look if we have a yes, only certain probability that photon will go to detection station A, that's Alice, for example, that's Bob. Okay, uh, then then uh, if there is a certain probability, then that that it will actually go to A. So there is additional factor, which is the probability. It lowers this probability. Here is also, but uh, co probability of coincidences they they have this factor uh, squared. And okay, so here are the factors are squared, but they are uh, uh, in power one in case of the negative negative. Uh, contribution to this inequality and of course that means that there is a threshold value of of the probability of of catching the the the, the photon under which let's say the, even for quantum mechanics it goes under zero okay and so so uh, and then so and and but there was one more problem because the polarizers were very close to the source they were not spatially separated and simply he was making, let's say, some, uh, uh, a lot of runs with the one setting, then he was sent, uh, changing the settings, a lot of runs in the different setting, and so on, so on, so on. Okay, so it was not really the Bell experiment. And the, 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 the allow aspect uh, in three attempts, uh, experimental attempts, uh, he, was mastering this technique of, of Clauser and the last, uh, the most famous experiments of his is, was in 1982. And, uh, and in his experiment, he achieved the following, uh, that these observation stations, which now are called Alice and Bob usually, were switching their settings uh, in, in, with such a speed that, in, let's say, when the photons were emitted, there was no information from the uh, in the from the point of view of, of special relativity on the setting, which will be in the final uh, in front of the final detector. I will show you the contraption. Okay, so the the idea was like that. He was this basically Clauser's source, but now the statistics was fantastic because they were they were pumping the atoms with laser fields. Atoms were uh, uh, emitting only some of the photons 
uh, were, were, were getting to, to this vision. And here it was an opt, uh, uh, optical um, switch, simply standing wave, which was once, uh, uh, let's say, uh, standing wave oscillating in such a way that you have uh, that was standing wave in a liquid and and it worked as a kind of switch of the direction of the of the photons okay so th there's a di different uh, photons behave differently when there was no uh, the, the pressure was identical everywhere and when there was the the, the, the maximum of, of the standing wave okay and depending depending on that the the photons were either hitting this polarizer or that polarizer. And that was uh, quite a sensational thing. And a lot of people thought that that this is the final experiment. Uh, and a lot, but a lot of people thought, no, that this is not. OK. And, uh, and I have to tell you uh, something about uh, the mood of the times. Okay, so, so uh, as I said, in that, this Einstein Bohr debate, Bohr was always telling Einstein, "Don't tell God how the world should work." Okay. And Bohr was, uh, and, and sorry, and Einstein was saying, "Well, I don't believe that God plays dice." And, and that was the quarrel. Uh, and then after 1935, the response of Bohr basically the shut up and cal calculate approach dominated. Then, then there was the Bell paper and as per experiment. And still, be, 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 despite all that, the subject was studied mainly by researchers skeptical about quantum mechanics. And really, it was a dangerous uh, thing to, to study such things. Just to tell you that uh, Clouser never received a permanent position at any American uh, university. And as per, uh, after finishing his last experiment in 1982, he did not do another experiment about entanglement. Such was the negative, negative uh, response of, of physicists against uh, touching such questions. He was so tired in 1982 of this opposition of, of, of people against his, uh, he, let's say, let's say ge general physical public, if, if I can use such a uh, phrase, that he quit mm, the discipline and moved to something else. Uh, uh, but in 1970s, 1980s, suddenly people were uh, the, uh, inventing uh, devices in which uh, you could observe single quantum objects. Okay? And uh, let's say, let's say, emblematic device is is, a, is an atomic trap, okay? in which you could hold um, uh, one and always the same atom for two weeks or something. Okay, so. Suddenly, things that uh, were uh, subject of Einstein and uh, Bohr debate started to be feasible. And Zeilinger was one of those persons involved in such a, such thing, things. He joined the group of Helmut Rauch, and he, for, for example, made the, uh, an experiment which was a direct observation of P. Uh, phase shift after rotation of neutron spin by two pi. Okay, that's a that's the the, the basic feature of 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 of, 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 a, of a fermion. Okay. Also, he tested Bjarnski, Birola, and Michelski nonlinear uh, modification of Bell's in, in, uh, sorry of of, of Schrodinger's uh, equation and showed that uh, it's invisible and so on so on. Okay. Also, atomic interferometry uh, emerged, and so on, so on. And there was a big progress in quantum optics. And what will be very important for the uh, rest of the story, the phenomenon of spontaneous down conversion was discovered and uh, then later mastered. 
And so the, 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 those crucial experiments concerning the, the, the essence of quantum mechanics started, uh, started to be feasible. Okay? And so now let, let, us, let, uh, let us ask this question why ASPE experiments did not close the issue. And so uh, the reason was the one that I had mentioned to you, the cascade emissions do not have direction correlation. So only a fraction of photons is collected. And the other thing that, uh, that was technical, detectors were inefficient. Okay. So even a lower fraction of them was, was uh, detected. And finally, what was criticized by, uh, by Anton in, in 1985, is that the, really the settings of the polarizing analyzers were not random. They were, there was this oscillating standing field uh, for those uh, acousto-optical uh, switches, and they were not random. And in the experiment, they must be random. And so the, one of the revolutions was that the, this parametric down conversion process and clear crystals enter my story. Uh, became the workhorse of, of optical uh, Bell experiments. And the hero here was Leonard Mandel and she and Ali, and then Rart and Trapster, they followed. And they, they, they made the first experiments, entangled experiments with uh, down conversion. What is very important in 1989, Horn, Schumann, and Seilinger, they uh, wrote a paper predicting a lot of new effects with parametric down conversion. And, and then in 1994, Seidinger, Kwiat, and she and co-workers, they uh, di discovered that you can use one of so-called uh, type two phase matching parametric down conversion to have even better sorts of entangled photons than, uh, than it was earlier thought. Okay, so what is parametric down conversion? I, 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 let's say that's a that's a fantastic phenomenon, which is happening in a crystal, which has first of all, uh, let's say the, the the crystal which must have a um, it cannot be anatomic crystal. It has it, it must be built out of uh, objects which are not uh, uh, centrosymmetric. And in such a case, the crystal becomes, as you know, birefringent if we, if, if, uh, let's say, um, if we look at the optical, optical phenomena. And, uh, and in, in this, uh, uh, such crystals which have, uh, uh, which have uh, the, the Quadratic nonlinearity non in the polarizability. Sorry, uh, as you know, they are able to produce second harmonics, and that was a beautiful experiment of 1960s. Okay, suddenly, there was no light, and from the crystal, take, because lasers were discovered, and if you had an infrared laser, there was no light, visible light coming to a crystal, and from the crystal light was coming out because of, of the second harmonics. And, but in physics, as you know, there is all, let's say, uh, let's say if you look at it, let's say the, the, the theory, the, uh, the underlying theory of, of light, quantum electrodynamics, um, which is uh, let's say, quantum mechanics applied to, to quantum fields. So the Hamiltonian, as you know, must be self adjoint and so the process of creation of second harmonics must be like that that you have a two photons of lower frequency which are annihilated so there are, there are two two annihilation operators for the lower frequency photons and then in in this in the same part of the hamiltonian you have to have a creation operator of the in a photon of double frequency. But there must be a conjugate, which is the, that the photon of the double frequency is 
is annihilated and you have two photons of neutral frequency. And then uh, uh, people already mastered so-called three-way mixing techniques and so on and so on, and it turned out that you can have a process in which you produce higher frequency light by using uh, by adding up frequencies of photons, which do not, do, it's not a second harmonic, so you could add up under specific conditions uh, a frequency of uh, one frequency to another and to produce a, a light of uh, frequency which is which is the sun and of course the inverse process must be possible okay but the the, the, the there is a and then the, the people observed and that that's also typically uh, qua, uh, quantum they, they they were playing around with those nonlinear crystals and several lasers and and so there were kind of laser of amplifiers uh, done. That's why the field of quantum, so-called electronics, was was uh, invented, which was a kind of attempt to have uh, devices like 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 electronic devices with light. And that was a very active um, field in 1960s, 1970s. And then they observed the, the so usually, let's say, in such a uh, uh, situation you have uh, this pumping field crossing this crystal and then you could do some magic for example you could pull the a light through here and then you will see a light here okay and uh, uh, and, if, and if you put here is the pumping field again if you put uh, an, another laser f uh, frequency here then you here will a light emerge, and this is the uh, 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 emerge of and and those frequencies of the light will will add up to the uh, pump light. Okay, and uh, and that, that that's absolutely natural. That's, that's these are uh, trivial, let's say, back of an envelope uh, calculations that that allow you to predict something like that. But the in, important thing that people have mastered is that. This, those processes happen only at this at very specific direction. So, so, so if you want to have a the new beam of light somewhere uh, uh, somewhere here, no, perhaps I will, I will yeah, here somewhere here, then this additional uh, light must be at a very specific direction with respect to the crystal of the pump. And then it turned out that if you just put the pump. And there is no nothing coming in coming here. There is something that is called parametric noise, and you know, no, you, you we don't like noise. Okay, so people were were, were hating this ph phenomenon, and that was sp simply spontaneous emission of pairs of photons that was happening when uh, when uh, the pump was in, and that's the inverse process. Okay, that's the, the simply the action, the fact that the Hamiltonian has all, always has, has this, mm, the other part of, 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 if there is a certain process encoded in Hamiltonian, there might be a kind of negative reverse process encoded in, in, in the Hamiltonian. And, uh, and, 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 and people were just grumbling about that. But then suddenly uh, in 1970, there were predictions, and then soon it was confirmed that those photons will pop up at the same moment. They will be detected at the same moment of time, that they are temporarily correlated, not only directionally correlated, but temporarily. And that was the discovery of parametric down, spontaneous parametric down compression. So it turns out that if we have a strong laser field and a nonlinear crystal, which has, as I said, uh, nonlinear po polarizability of a square nonlinearity, then we can have pairs of photons spontaneously emitted into well-defined directions. And that, and it's very easy. You don't have to do the calculations, but calculations are quite not that complicated. But but they are not not your first uh, gut reaction. What 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 they should be. 
the, the directions of the photons here are the wave vectors, okay, are such that if there is, this is the wave vector of the pumping field, then the, uh, the, the wave vectors of, of the uh, down converted photons, one of them is called signal, the other idler, always add up, or almost add up. And I give you a hint that this is not so obvious because this precision of adding up depends on the size of the crystal, really on the size of the of the volume of the crystal in which is the pumping light. Okay, so if we reduce our crystal to just single atom or single molecule, this will not work, this direction directional uh, correlation will not work. We shall come back to single atom situation of Aspect and cluster space. And what is very important, and that, that that's already the signature of it, of course, the, 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 the frequencies of the emitted photons add up almost perfectly to, to the pump photon, but that was the, kind of the initial idea. And then in 1994, my friends have uh, discovered that we have a so-called uh, type two phase matching uh, nonlinear crystal. Then you can. They were really built for something different, but they were, were playing around. And this is really fantastic what you can reach in, in experimental physics when you play with your with your devices and they, they they just checked what will happen if we tilt a little bit this crystal and suddenly they saw the, exactly the thing that they wanted simply it turned out that if the, this is the pumping field then uh, uh, one photon for, for, uh, let's say there's always the photons are always emitting in pairs so if there is a photon then there is a photon if there is a photon then there is a photon if if here is a photon then there is a photon and the, 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 the center of symmetry of this process is the pumping field, okay? Of course, the, uh, uh, we are here talking about photons in specific, uh, of specific frequencies, okay? And, uh, and, and, but what is very important, this upper cone, cone, cone of emissions had one, that, one polarization and the other one had an orthogonal. A linear polarization. Okay, so on, yeah, upon the in, in, in places where there is intersection of those two cones of emissions, just look if there is a photon here because of the symmetry, there must be a photon here. Okay, but we don't know whether it's from upper cone or from the lower cone, and therefore uh, the, the the state of the two photons is entangled in the polarization. So it's not normalization factor here. Okay, and that's that's the workhorse of, of quantum information, and that's the beautiful aura that you can have. It it was produced in 1994 by placing a, a, a photographic plate on 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 um, let's say here. Okay, to put it short. Okay, and I think this is the most beautiful picture in physics. And, and so, if, let's, if there is a photon here, then there is a photon here, and so on, so on. But those photons are, for example, H uh, polarized, these are V vertical polarized, these are horizontal. And here, if you have those points, we don't, we don't know which, what is the polarization of the photon. And simply, uh, you have, a, 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 let's say, a, you block of the radiation, and uh, then you uh, bore two little holes here, and you will always have photons which are uh, polarization entangled. And so th that was uh, with that, thousands of experiments have been done, and that's a perfect source for uh, polarization entangled states, and what is very important, also perfectly directionally uh, correlated. And this allowed enormous amount of experiments. Okay, and so now now let, let me move. I hope that I, I will have can have on 10 minutes more. Uh, uh, now let me move to uh, to 
Danny Greenberger, you remember this gentleman from the library, and Anton Seilinger's very important contribution from 1999. And look, this is one quarter of century after Aspe uh, sorry after Bell's paper, where he considered entanglement of two particles. They ask themselves what will happen if we consider three particles. And before that, everybody was thinking, including this stupid lecturer that you listen to now, but I was at the time young and uh, young in the field and unexperienced, and I was following advice of the elders, and they were saying, well, co Bors complementarity, no, no, correspondence would, would suggest that the more particles we have, the less quantum everything becomes. Okay. But they did, did not listen to that, and they considered such a state, okay, which this is a general, so you, as you see, we have three particles. One is going to Alice, the, the second to Bob, and third one to Cecil, okay? And here, this Alice is in a certain state, and uh, uh, those, this one is in state A, this one is state B, this one is in state C, and here they are in the orthogonal states with respect. So A prime is orthogonal to, to, to A, okay? And then, let's say, if we have a contraption that can impose locally phases, okay, then we can control the phase between those two elements of this superposition. Okay? And then we, we, uh, we, um, measure uh, in, in such a way that we measure in, uh, uh, we make measurements by asking the question whether the system after the measurement is in the state which is a superposition of those uh, two orthogonal states. This superposition or orthogonal superposition, okay, with the pl this one with plus and minus, they are mutually orthogonal. So that's the, this, is, this is the set of questions ask to the system, okay? And then if you calculate uh, ampli uh, probability ampl amplitude for that, so just look at this, this thing. so it's obvious that it's something like that, okay? This phase must, 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 must appear here in the probability amplitude, okay? And, uh, and if you parameterize again, just like uh, Bell taught us uh, all the events, let's say, event seeing a po uh, object in a superposition with a plus, you say, say this is a value plus one, but seeing the object with it, uh, uh, in, in a superposition, which is uh, with a minus, then it's a values minus, okay? And, and then th if you, take the dependence on that, on those phases, which can be local, I can show you on the next slide, and you get such a beautiful formula, okay? Such a trivial, beautiful formula, and which has fantastic consequences, and, and in that way I can show you Bell's theorem, that's a better version of Bell's theorem, okay? And so now, just uh, uh, all the results that Alice, Bob, and, and, and and Cecil or, or Charlie uh, perform. Sorry, I, I would like to. Okay, perhaps I will show you such an experiment. So uh, here is Charlie station, here is Alice station, here is Bob, and they have a kind of phase shift which, which they control. Okay, so you, let's say you can imagine such experiments. And so if Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen are right, then all those values of the observables have to have before the experiment value plus or minus one. Okay, so, so if the cosinus is, cosinus is such of, of the local set, phase settings of Alice, Bob, and, and, and Cecil, I'm sorry, okay, uh, if all, uh, if, if the cosinus is one, that let's say, let, let us consider the situation. So, so this may be for phase zero, for phase zero, phase zero, phase zero, okay? Then those elements of reality of Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen uh, 
have to be for phase one something. It must be plus minus one, but we don't know what. This this is plus minus one, but we don't know what. And this, but they, for cosine is equal to zero, but they must add, 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 add to one. But now let us con consider. Sorry, there is a I think uh, yeah <laughs> on both slides there is a, 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 a mistake. Okay, now let us leave this phase here and consider the complementary result. This W is two. I don't know. This is an old transparency and uh, have a lot of mistakes. There. Okay, so th it's pi over two seconds here, and here is also pi over two. So the overall phi phase is cosine cosine gives us cosine pi, which is minus one. So such a combination of einstein podolsky elements of reality, which pre-exist before the experiment, they are properties in a way of the particle, give me minus one. Then I just look, look, I put the zero phase here and the pi over two phases here. And finally, I consider also the situation with zero phase here and pi over two. And all those correlations have total phase equal to pi. So it's minus one, minus one, minus one. Okay. But if we multiply all those four equations, obviously the right hand side will give you minus one. Each of those numbers is plus minus one. A square of such a number is one. So all the left hand sides give us uh, one. And so we have the JZ contradiction. Okay. They showed that Einstein. Podolsky and Rosen not were only not were slightly wrong, but totally wrong. And even considering their type uh, of correlations, um, you 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 run into contradiction. And of course, the question was how to observe such correlations. And uh, I, I I am I'm happy that I contributed to that because in in a paper which is, which is. 30 years old and uh, four weeks, I believe. Uh, uh, we, we have shown that you, uh, at that time, there were only sources of pairs of photons. There was only this uh, parametric ground conversion. And we, we were thinking how to produce events which are involving more than, 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 than two photons. Okay? And it turned out that you can have two sources and exchange uh, uh, exchange entanglement. Imagine that there is the f f source number one, which has such a collision that either photon is emitted here or here, and the other and the other here, or this, the second thing photon is emitted here and the other then is emitted here. And the same property is. In, with, with this source, either the primed double emission or the unprimed double emission. And then if you observe those, at those two detectors firings and the observation is such, it's behind a beam splitter. So you really, at the first glance, you may think that uh, you don't know where from uh, comes the photon, but it's really a very delicate uh, situation. You have to use filters and so on and so on in order really to destroy this uh, frequency correlation that you, you, you had it, to hide it in a way. Okay. Then it turns out that, let's say, if, 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 we, have a, if we have a total in, indistinguishability, if we, if we have a firing of this detector, then the photon could have come from that, and then there is a then there is a photon here. But alternatively, uh, this could have uh, come from that, and there is a photon on the way here. Okay. The same is with the other uh, uh, firing. Okay. Either the, the 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 firing was due to a photon that went to this detector, and that, then its brother is here or firing uh, via this photon and its brother is here and then you will you see that this firing means that uh, we have um, if we have a photon here then we have a photon here and if we have a photon here then we have a photon here and that's an again an entanglement and just look that those photons never interacted with themselves only their brothers interacted 
and we can put them into uh, uh, interfer interference devices and observe uh, Bell's um, correlations. Okay, and as a matter of fact, in the last uh, page of the paper we wrote, the following finally it has not escaped our attention that using similar techniques one can obtain a source exhibiting Greenberg, Greenberger Horn Seilinger correlations. We also know that the subcoherence time that's a technical thing that we have invented. Coincidence is a general requirement in experiments involving bell measurements of particles from different sources, e.g. in quantum teleportation. In conclusion, we remark that such experiment with event rather registration of independent photons might be a further step toward definite test of uh, against local realism. And basically, that's a prophecy, prophecy of, of Ant, 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 Anton's uh, Nobel Prize 30 years earlier. Okay, and so uh, if you think how to do the JZ without, so that, that that's the configuration for the JZ. That's the, it was not done in, in such a way, but uh, but still the idea is more, more or less. And in the meantime, basically in the in the in those years, uh, exploded something that is called quantum information science, and that was mainly because of Bennett and Brassar quantum cryptography a paper. They showed that with uh, quantum uh, with operation on, on single quantum particles, you can get a, a distribution the distribution of a cryptographic key, then Eckert showed that you can do it also using Bell's theorem. Uh, then uh, quantum teleportation was was uh, suggested, and then there was the birth of the ideas of related with quantum uh, computers, the Shor's quantum factorization algorithm appeared in 1994, and serious, serious uh, work on uh, possible quantum computation has uh, 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 started, okay? Uh, if I have questions, perhaps I will, uh, let's say, if, if I have questions, I will move to this uh, teleportation experiment. Uh, perhaps I will show you the link of, the, of this teleportation experiment, which is, uh, the, the, the idea of the experiment is just a few words. You have a, we have a source of entanglement. Here is a, Photon comes to the Alice's lab and she makes a joint measurement on this photon and that photon. Okay. And after the joint measurement, the photons emerge according to the collapse postulate in an entangled state. And all the information about this initial state is, uh, is wiped out. But uh, this photon of the EPR source comes to Bob. And if he gets just two, two bits, which says, which one of the four possible uh, results happened in the Alice's Bob, he can reproduce the state. And neither Alice nor Bob knows what is the state, but they know that it's the same state. And, and that is the contraction which was uh, used in, in, in Anton's lab. And the, 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 the clever idea was, I, I did not contribute to it, that instead of the two sources that you saw in the entanglement swapping, there was one source, source but uh, 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 used twice. So there was a mirror, and it was bouncing back, and the same crystal was used for the, for the emission. And there was a kind of prime emission, which was producing this pair, and the second emission was used to pro produce this, this initial state. But it was an independent emission. And they showed the teleportation. This dip here is deep enough to show teleportation. Teleported. Had it been like that, that, that this would, would not have meant uh, teleportation. This, these are these are our original uh, original um, figures uh, from nature, and the GHZ was made by a, a little bit different configuration, but the, the same principles have to be used that we are publishing the entanglement swapping paper. And uh, uh, so, and uh, what is uh, uh, very important, uh, uh, in 2000, 
15, uh, finally, people have made loophole-free ball experiments. And uh, what is loophole-free in this case? That first of all, the settings were really independently set on into spatially spatially separated labs. So that's the first thing. And then basically all photons were 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 caught. Okay, so there was no loophole in losing photons. And that happened in 2015. And I'm 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 very proud to say that this uh, the Black Horse group of Hanson, who everybody thought that was that it would be either Zeilinger or Gisele or whoever who uh, do the first uh, experiment of the kind, but uh, the group of Hanson in Delft they use entanglement swapping uh, between NV centers in diamonds, uh, which were by half a mile distant from, from each other. And they had very little test statistics, something like 200 uh, events per, per, per pair of settings. But still, uh, they were able to violate the, the CH inequality with quite a good, a good uh, let's say, by quite a good factor. And a few weeks later, Zeininger followed with a different method. And finally, my friends, uh, Harold Weinfurter's group, made entanglement and swapping between two atomic traps. And they, they were ahead of everybody, but one of the laser stopped working. And uh, OK. So this is the story of the of uh, of 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 the Nobel Prize, and more or less the story of the of the uh, basic science uh, related with with quantum entanglement and and uh, and basic physics physics around it. And I'm open uh, to questions. Sorry, I was a little bit longer than I expected, but uh, thank you very thank you. Very for, for, for this uh, really great uh, lecture, which is now open for questions and and comments. Uh, we'll uh, see. And, and we have a question from Andrzej Olczek. Quantum mechanics has many interpretations. Do the experiments you mentioned exclude any of the interpretations, example, the broad Bomb theory, uh, or yeah, yeah. I, I, I unfortunately I see the the, the chat. So uh, just look, they exclude because there was an interpretation, which we, we could call it einstein pavlovsky rosen interpretation. Okay, that uh, there are hidden variables, which work according to the special relativity. Okay. Uh, and uh, and uh, so the Bell's theorem already excluded it mathematically. Okay, so that it showed that quantum mechanics, as we use it, okay, does not uh, uh, um, does not follow uh, th those ideas of einstein pavlovsky rosen in such a way that uh, relativistic causality still, still works. Okay, uh, but. One thing is theory, right? And the other thing is experiment. So those experiments in 2015 completely excluded this, this worldview that there is a, that uh, simply the, 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 the particles carry some information about either probabilities or the values of, of pre previous, uh, of the experiments that are to be uh, done on them. Okay, just like, we know that, uh, mm, let's say, uh, we, I, I, I have some amount of money in my left pocket. OK, okay I, I'm, I'm online. Yes, I have some amount of money. OK, let me see. And so I, I told you, OK, now you can calculate it. It's straight from from a uh, cash dispenser. OK, and and you know that if it is the if I'm not cheating, it was the value that I had in my in, in my pocket before the experiment, okay, and that's 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 realism. And, and the other thing is, 
the, the locality, which is simply that this kind of realism that what we measure, that means count my money, uh, is, uh, is uh, such events are following all the relativistic principles. Okay, so no far away events can, which happen at the same time, can influence each other. Okay, in case of Bell experiment, it is the setting of Alice, especially, and setting of Rock. And there, there is an emission, and the two stations are waiting for it. And, and at the time before arrival of the particles, the, 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 the settings are decided. Okay, so the settings couldn't have uh, influenced the emission and couldn't have influenced the uh, Alice's setting couldn't have influenced Bob's result because it was simply unknown you know, according to the relativity uh, on the Bob's side. Okay, and so this, the, uh, this, this is locality. So definitely local realistic interpretation, so interpretation that, that uh, quantum mechanics is, 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 is having uh, some hidden variables which are determining future results and they are determined at the very beginning of the formulation of the state, this interpretation is gone. Definitely. And only in 2015, because previously it was, but, but in, let's say in 2015, started to be a definite statement about nature. Previously it was a definite statement about the theory, but we know that the theories, theories are there and they go, but nature stays. And concerning the the the, the Broil bomb theory, no, it did not invalidate this one because the Broil bomb uh, theory is non-local. It's non-relativistic. It has hidden variables, but they are totally crazy. Uh, even uh, the, my friend uh, uh, Berger. Anglet, they calls them uh, uh, surrealistic. Okay, uh, simply uh, you know in the in the the bomb uh, interpretation you have those tra tra trajectories of particles. Okay, but they are if you consider a pair of particles they become uh, totally crazy. And what is very important in case of the uh, broil bomb theory, if you do the calculations, it turns out that the setting of, for example, spin measurement at Alice's, of Alice's particle in her lab will influence immediately the result of, of uh, and, and even the distribution of the hidden variables on, on Bob's side. Okay, it's a non-local theory. And th that's a very good question. And as a matter of fact, this observation of, the, of this property of non-locality of Bob bomb uh, 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 de Broil bomb uh, theory uh, pushed Bell to consider his theorem. He wanted to ask answer the following question. Is this a property, non is non-locality a property of any hidden variable theory of, of uh, quantum mechanics? And in a way, uh, Bell's theorem can be formulated in, in, in such a way. If you have a hidden variable theory of quantum mechanics, then it cannot be uh, consistent with uh, special relativity. The, the theory, not quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Uh... I have another question. Uh, maybe it's very naive. Or <laughs> uh, so you you showed us an examples of uh, two particles or three particles, and uh, in each case you consider just two states. Is it possible also to have the same reasoning with uh, three possible states and two uh, particles? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm I do not have transparencies to to show that. Of course, I have them somewhere in other presentations. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, one of the, uh, the, 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 let's say everybody knew that you most probably you could. In 1982, Mermin was studying something uh, like that. And he showed some version of Bell's theorem also for, uh, for three-state systems. 
Really? And uh, but uh, people were thinking that uh, again there was this curse of Bohr's correspondence principle. People were thinking that the more the higher dimension of your system, the more classical it becomes. Okay, there was such rule of thumbs at the time used. Okay, and 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 so people were not uh, not, not studying, but but the entourage around Anton including uh, Danny Greenberger and Mike Horn, they were thinking just the opposite. I was, when I came to Innsbruck, Anton told me about their, their ideas, and I was really working also on that. And then in, in the year 2000, we showed numerically with my Gdańsk team and Anton as a, as a guru of this, 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 this idea, we have a paper in which we showed that if we go to higher than just two but higher dimensional system for example five possible results okay then we the violation of 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 bell inequalities are getting stronger yeah. it was just the opposite and uh, perhaps i will tell you one i shouldn't be telling it but i i really suffered because of that because uh, then that that was a paper with my first uh, PhD student, and the, and uh, and he 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 had his public uh, defense of his PhD a few years later, and and the referee who was reaching this this uh, board's uh, correspondence principle that it will work also in that case. He wrote a uh, uh, report about every chapter of the PhD thesis except the one, the last one, which was about this result. <laughs> <laughs> Is there an experiment? <laughs> but was it experimentally showed? No, no. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, later, it was later. More, uh, yeah. shown experimentally, and, and uh, there was a funny adventure because t uh, t uh, one year later, Gisens group has derived a, a, a specific value inequality for that. And uh, when I was opening this paper, my heart was whether the numbers will agree, uh, and they agreed absolutely. So our numerical predictions, we just, uh, you know, we just wrote a program, which is funny thing, it's basically so-called linear programming. And uh, let's say from the point of view of, of let's say, as, as essence of, of, of computer science, to all, all those prob uh, problems of with Bell's theorem is, is linear uh, programming. The only thing is that you have to have also some way of maneuvering those possible settings, okay, because you you have to find the optimal settings of your polarizers or, or, or something like that. Because it is not so that for every setting you will observe violation of, of value inequalities. So, so, so we, we, we did it and it was confirmed uh, by anal analytical. And we also discovered, uh, I even kind of better, but we discovered also independently uh, but but our discovery was not so nice because we discovered Bell inequality only for three-dimensional systems, and Gisele and Anthony they they uh, discovered a family of Bell inequalities for arbitrary um, dimensional systems. You have created in Gdańsk a high-profile uh, institute. Um, I wonder what is uh, experimentally possible in your institute. I, I, I did not have a chance to see it, uh, so uh, uh, that's a, that's uh, uh, so just uh, the, 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 the answer will be very fun. Ma, 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 our center is called International Center for Theory of Quantum Technologies. And we were uh, in Gdansk, we were uh, the theorists got inter interested in entanglement. Okay? And we, uh, let's say, we have, I believe that we contributed in, 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 uh, important papers to, to the discipline. So we don't do any experiments. Mm -hmm. But we have 
uh, our co co for years, my collaborator was Anton Seilinger. So my, uh, let's say, I did not show my papers, experimental papers with Anton, but one of them is also uh, very much related with the first question. We have also excluded another type of even non-local, uh, non-local um, um, interpretations of uh, uh, hidden variable interpretations of of of, of bell correlations, and 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 also if you remember Harald Weinfurter in one of the uh, in, in all of the pictures, ah no, not from the ceremony, uh, then uh, I. Uh, we performed a lot, a lot uh, quite a lot of experiments uh, with him. So, at, at in I think 2004, I could claim that I am the king of four four photon correlations because I was on two papers: one from Munich and one from mm -hmm. from uh, uh, Beijing. And in, in, uh, let's say there were about the four photon correlations observations, and I was on both. <laughs> As a co-author, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so so, and uh, as a matter of fact, now people are uh, my friends in China. They are uh, able to observe even ten photon correlations. Mm -hmm. So they have in, in interferometers which observe correlations of ten photons. It's really amazing. Uh, you are showing references also to. Uh, professors uh, from our uh, university, uh, I mean, Galunicki Birula. Uh, and uh, um, is there any place in Poland uh, where people are involved in experimental um, uh, work uh, uh, of this kind you you are interpreting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 it, and the, 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 let's say the, the group of, of, of Konrad Banaszek. Mm -hmm. in, 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 in 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 Warsaw, they are doing entanglement experiments. And what is very important, uh, Banaszek and uh, when she was collaborating with Wong, say they have also cooked up some very subtle methods, which uh, allowed this entanglement swapping and other things uh, via different techniques. And with his methods, we lose much less uh, photons. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, perhaps, uh, but but the, uh, but the thing is, perhaps I will show you just just the uh, transparencies again. Uh -uh. Why? Uh -huh. I have to click here. Uh, okay, so the the thing is, let's say that uh, here we we must have filters. Okay, with with this. Comp ah, sorry, you we don't see it. Okay. Okay, sorry. So where is it? Uh, here. Okay. So here we have filters. Okay. And the, ob the obvious thing is that in case of, do you see it? Yes. The, so it. from the point of view of filters, you lose photons. So you lose events. Okay. Uh, uh, here we don't don't need any filters, and that's that's a very interesting feature of 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 those phenomena. Okay, so we are, we are filtering only here, and 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 we lose photons. So if there is, let's say, n events on that side, n events on that side, but uh, and then some of them on, are only coincident in terms of emission. Then additionally, in this process, we use a lot of uh, photons. But uh, the 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 Conrad uh, was able to show that if you tailor specifically those sources uh, and, and the, the the geometry and this shape of the pulse and so on so then you uh, you almost do not need the filtering here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he did not use it in that uh, uh, scenario but it's it's kind of obvious that it, it's a solution also to, to that scenario as a matter of fact we, we have showed also that if we want to do this experiment, this experiment, then those two sources must be pulsed. And that solves a lot of problems. Okay, so really, all those experiments were done with pulsed sources, and that was our 1995 paper. We really realized, and just looked, and then those two sources can be fed from one, from one, la uh, pumped from one laser. You can install a beam mm -hmm. speaker and so on. 
and and uh, and so you you gain enormously. And the other thing is that pulse sources uh, have, have, have the good thing that then you really don't care about the time the resolution of the detector, which was very important. Really, when we, in '93 when we proposed that, that was completely uh, that was a nice idea. Uh, let's say uh, uh, original, but uh, uh, it took something like 10 years for people to make an experiment with that type of uh, configuration for continuous and, and, and filters. It was are, there, are there any free electron lasers useful in this kind of, or uh, used in, in this kind of experiment? Uh, no. no. No, it's not 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 needed. Okay, already we have the, the thing is that you uh, you can have very uh, let's say uh, you can use all the techniques of producing uh, so-called squeeze states, which were invented in 1980s basically. Uh, to to use this uh, uh, to use to have this this process and as a matter of fact this parametric down conversion source when the pump is very strong and there are not there's not only one pump per emitted two three four during one pulse that crosses the the, the crystal, then uh, the, from the point of, of view of quantum statistics, this is squeezed state of matter. So there is a very nice uh, link also with <coughs> something that was exciting people in the 1980s in quantum optics. So really, very strong parameter on conversion it's, uh, gives us squeezed state. Mm -hmm. All these uh, experiments are for photons. Can you uh, show experimentally the same phenomena for different other particles. Yeah, yeah and that uh, let's say I have to uh, say that uh, I cannot agree with you. Okay, 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 sorry. And so I will show you. Okay, one of my last transparencies. Unfortunately, I do not have. Uh, yeah, you mentioned about the. Uh, okay, uh, ion shop, uh, okay. Yeah. And and he 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 had that. That was a fantastic experiment. It took him ten years to built everything. So he built two atomic traps, first one, okay, and then a second, which was not exact copy, but from the point of view of physics, it was the same phenomenon, the same atoms. And and the, 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 the uh, just following the idea of entanglement swappings, uh, uh, swapping, the atoms were uh, emitting photons, okay, and and the, 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 the photons, emitted photons, were entangled with the local atom in the trap. And there was a remote trap half a mile away, in which was, there was another uh, atom, and it was emitting a photon, and, and this atom was entangled with the photon. And they were meeting in between uh, in... Uh, uh, in uh, 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 sorry, I, I think I did not did not open open it. So they were uh, in between, and there was a beam splitter and this measurement that I was was showing to you. Okay, and and after that, the two uh, two atoms in the traps became entangled, two distant. And in case of atoms, the efficiency of measurement of their states is very high. So the states of the atoms were entangled and you could very effectively measure this uh, in what, let's say, state and depending on your setting, the type of, of, of profile that you are using, uh, uh, let's say you could uh, change the way you, 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 you test the atoms. And he was able to show uh, that the the counts the uh, he was I, uh, really he was ionizing those atoms and so on so on. Under specific... atoms? Do, the, do I... the, the atoms were neutral in the traps, and the measurement was ba based on ionization. Okay. Because but what what was the chemical element? What what kind of atom it was? I'm a theorist. 
but uh, you, you can look it up. And uh, the, the funny thing is that I, of course, I was a consultant in this experiment for, for ages, I was making a pilgrimage to to, um, to uh, uh, Munich every every October to discuss uh, this experiment. And but finally, unfortunately, due to the mal mal malfunction of one uh, laser. Maybe this is uh, this is uh, a very na naive question. Uh, so, uh, but uh, if you have such two uh, atoms, uh, states of which are entanglement, yes. uh, and they are separated one from each other, um, uh, so at certain distance. So, how about the the speed of this relation? Is there any any is this a, a, a reasonable question to ask about uh, uh, the speed of this, uh, um, um, of this, I don't know, interaction or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's a, uh, thank you very much for this question. Okay, that, that's a very important question and it really touches the, the essence of everything. Okay, that, that's the thing. Okay, that's the thing. Because let's say, uh, had we had those, uh, uh, hidden variables, there would be a speed, okay, most probably. And even Gizem was, some people think that there is a speed, but Gizem was even measuring it, but the speed, let's say, it was always greater than any speed that was detectable in his experiment, okay, uh, and far much beyond speed of light. Uh, and, and so uh, the, the, the thing is that, that, uh, uh, the, the, the events happen at the same time, so there is no speed because they are simultaneous in, in, in the laboratory reference frame. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and they have no, no influence. And then there is a question: if there is a violation of of, of relativity, there is no violation of the, of relativity in, in such a case uh, because if you uh, if you look, uh, let's say the event, let's say all local events, if, if, let's say you have those laboratories of Alice, yeah. and Bob, okay, and Alice can do some settings, okay, but if we don't tell Bob what was the setting of Alice, tell that means I follow telephone him and send him information. And he just observes the phenomenon basing on the counts and things like that in, in his lab. He will see, he will see no influence, no matter what is the technique of Alice's device, and no matter what she observes, he will always observe the same statistics. Okay? And quantum mechanics predicts only statistics. Okay? That's the end. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's a one of the, nobody was thinking when formulating quantum mechanics that it will have this property, which was deeply, some people are claiming that there is a conflict. No, there is a deeply rooted thing that let's, let's say two, in two spatially separated situations, the observer here will observe a quantum phenomena which are completely unrelated to what is happening here, even if the systems are in, in, in an entangled state. Mm -hmm. But they can see the relation only when they communicate. Okay? Only after communication. Mm -hmm. And that's already relative causality in action. Okay, you have a telephone with a let's say like the first world war and hello can you hear me? I got plus one. What? And so on so okay. Uh, so without that locally everything is uh, as it should be relativistic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't unless you have family now because I do not see any more any... Questions. So there yes. is a comment from there is a comment from Andrei Olchak. Spooky action at distance. Yes. That's, yeah. again, and, that's again, let's say that's what I I, I tried to uh, to say. From the point of view of quantum mechanics, there's nothing. If you think 
that uh, uh, particles carry properties and everything is deterministic, then the Bell's theorem and the experiment tells us that there is a spooky action with the mm -hmm. But provided that if you stick to quantum mechanics, there are no hidden variables, no predetermined uh, results, and there is no spooky action with the distance. And of course, the thing is, let's say, uh, as somebody working in the foundations of quantum mechanics, I, uh, let's say, uh, uh, in order not to get crazy, you build, uh, let's say, some kind of, you follow some interpretation of quantum mechanics. Okay, and uh, so that's related also with the, with the, with the first experiment. And my interpretation is is uh, minimal, minimalistic. Okay. Or, or, I said simply, I take quantum mechanics as it is. Quantum mechanics is not for, for a single system. It is for ensemble of equivalently prepared system. That defines this, the, the, the state, okay? And it gives only probabilistic uh, predictions. Why? Because it gives prediction for an ensemble of equivalently prepared systems. And if you, you don't want to get crazy, that's the only way out. Um, you mentioned that uh, the more particle uh, you consider, uh, the uh, um, inequalities are bigger and bigger. Uh, is the mass of particle important? You mentioned about the no, photon, no, no. about the atom. No, no. no it, 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 there, there are the states. Of course, uh, experimentally, it may be important. Mm -hmm. Experimentally, it may be important, but uh, otherwise, uh, Let's say it's important to let's say the entanglement of the states of the particle, mm, nothing more. And and uh, uh, really, let's say when you consider those, those G Z correlations, uh, let's say, and you go to more and more because once you have three, then immediately your imagination, even you, if if you don't have any um, experience in that type of problems, you can produce what of what, whatever configurations. And really, it's it's getting absolutely non classical. Absolutely not classical. So the room, the classical relations, let's say, uh, let's say it's very small, very, very small. And th that was also part of my, of, of my study for, for years. And, uh, I, I worked on, on, on Bell inequalities for such situations. If you, Paulina, do not, if you, not any more questions. Uh, really, thank you, thank you very much for this excellent lecture and discussion.